Hello everybody, hey, Todd Bullis here, and I wanted to talk about something real quick. There's been a lot of discussion about Abby Johnson lately, and I just want to shed my light, the light that I know that I've seen with uh, Abby Johnson over the years. Um, I want to compare her to somebody called John Newton, okay? John Newton, I don't know if you guys know who John Newton is. Anybody know who John Newton is? Hey, everybody. Um, John Newton is the, was the slave trader. Um, he, he had a, a ship and he would bring slaves over and, um, you know, he would kill slaves and, uh, you know, imprison them and, and then sell them, right? So John Newton was a famous slave transporter, all right? In his later years, John Newton repented. Like he saw how wicked and how evil he was being a slave uh, trader, right? And he saw, he saw the worst of it. He saw like men and children and women having to defecate on, them, on, on each other, um, the horrible conditions when one would get too sick or too die, they would, you know, they would throw them overboard. Um, I mean, John Newton was an extremely wicked, wicked man, right? And what John Newton did, when he repented, he had fruit worthy of that repentance, right? Like he, he stayed extremely humble, all right? He, he went into serving mankind humbly. Um, he went into, um, you know, doing what was good and right before the Lord, right? Um, and even, even as a restored Christian, he stayed humble. He served people. He, uh, he went blind, and, and still he had grief in his heart over what he had done to so many people. And to have a God that could restore him, to give him like, like peace beyond all understanding, you know, what God could do for a man like John Newton, you know, he, he came up with the song Amazing Grace. You know, I mean, how great God is, how great a restorative God that we have, right? So we got John Newton, a completely wicked, depraved man, right? He becomes repentant, and then he serves mankind, right? He serves them, and um, he does everything he can to free, to make abortion, sorry, to make slavery illegal, right? To abolish it, to make it illegal. He was an abolitionist. He encouraged other men to take up the banner to make slavery illegal. That's what he did. All right. So you take that type of person who history looks back upon and, and says, wow, look what, look what happened to this guy's life. You know, and we sing his song. It's an amazing song, a spirit filled song. It's just, it's an amazing thing, right? And then you take somebody like Abby Johnson, all right, who Abby Johnson worked in an abortion mill. She was uh, one of the, the people that dealt with, like, doctrine or, like, this is what we say when this comes up. This is how we spin this. This is how we, like, get people to think a certain way. She would, like, um, promote different things and, and help people get quotas and how do we hit our quotas. And she was, like, she was, like in management of Planned Parenthood, right? And she helped to murder just thousands and thousands and thousands of babies, right? And make people feel good about it, you know? Ease their conscience. So that's what Abby Johnson did, right? So when she supposedly repents after making her living on mur the murder of innocent babies, all right? After she makes her living doing that and she repents, now she goes on a cir circuit tour and she talks to people and she charges ten to fifteen thousand dollars, sometimes more, depending, plus two airline tickets for her and her husband or somebody to go with her, plus all expenses. So if you want Abby Johnson to come to your church, it's ten to fifteen to maybe even twenty thousand dollars, maybe even more by the time all the expenses are paid, right? hotel, car rental, all that stuff has to be paid, right? So Abby Johnson is probably now making way more money speaking about 
how wicked the, abol- the how wicked the um, the abortion movement or abortion is. She makes more money doing that now than than she worked full time killing babies. Right? She only has to work a couple weekends a month, you know, to make twenty, thirty grand. Right? Plus, she has all this other stuff going on. It, it's amazing. And she is extremely, she's not humble at all, right? And here's the best part. She didn't go like Newton trying to encourage other people to make abortion or to make slavery illegal. She doesn't do that. She says things like this, and I quote, I do not support this bill, a bill to make it illegal, because it is unconstitutional. We have made great strides in Texas passing constitutional legislation that works. I also do not support legislation that would punish women. She does not want to make abortion illegal. She just wants to have a job regulating child sacrifice. That's what Abby Johnson does. She does not want to make it illegal. She's very bitter towards any sidewalk counselors that call out to women saying, please, please don't murder your baby. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. You know, don't do it. It'll be on your conscience forever. You will go to hell if you are unrepentant and, do, and don't accept Jesus Christ. If you don't repent, all murderers will end up in heaven. If you do any of that, Abby Johnson says horrible things about you. She'll say you're the problem. You're the issue. You, know? you need to stop that. So what she wants is people just to go ahead and pray. Just pray. While she makes tons of money. Um, advocating regulation. And again, that's all she does. She has not supported any of the bills in Texas or anywhere else to make abortion illegal. So Abby's actually more wicked now than she was when she was killing babies for a living. Right? What's more wicked? Someone who says, hey, we should be able to kill babies? Or someone who claims the name of Christ and says, well, we should regulate the killing of babies, right? If she's read the Bible, if she understands the word of God, she knows that God actually does hate the hands that shed innocent blood. And the Bible says, woe to you who write iniquitous decrees. In other words, woe to you who make bad laws, like a heartbeat law, right? Anything that's incremental, all right? Now, incrementalism in and of itself is not bad. But if you do bad incrementalism, that's bad. So if you say when, where, or how you can or cannot kill somebody, that is an iniquitous decree. That is bad. We should protect all human life, and we should never compromise and say, these are the people we can't kill, and these are the people we can. We should never do that, right? So Abby Johnson in her movie, Unplanned, or whatever the heck it is, is going to be a pro-life movie which regulates and talks about regulating when, where, and how you can murder children, and it will do nothing to help make make abortion illegal, all right? Abolitionists need to oppose Abby Johnson because, again, she's a regulationist, and she does not want to make abortion illegal. So everybody, please, we need to be like John Newton, who repent of our wickedness, and do what's right before the Lord. We do not want to go with the masses to do evil so good will come, right? We don't do something wicked so something good will come, right? What we want is, we want something like Gideon's army, right? Where we actually honor God, and he lifts us up. He helps us. He'll help us make it illegal. God doesn't need us to be immoral, right, for good to come. He just wants us to be obedient, right? So, again, Abby Johnson needs to repent. Call her to repent. Everybody should call her to repent of being incrementalist and for helping to keep abortion legal in Texas and in the United States because we need to make abortion illegal. And Abby Johnson is in direct opposition to making abortion illegal, right? If John Newton was that way, all he would say is, Yeah, I shouldn't have been bringing slaves over, but now my new job is, if he was like Abby Johnson, is we're going to make sure the slaves are more comfortable in the slave ships. You know, we'll actually give them medicine when they're sick, right? And we'll still give them over the slave owners because, you know, if he was like Abby Johnson, he wouldn't be trying to uh, make slavery illegal, 
all right? Because we know all people are created in the image of God. John Newton would agree to that, okay? And Abby Johnson should agree to that. And we shouldn't allow for any child to be murdered. We need to make it illegal, right? So, um, see, anybody got any questions real quick? I didn't think so. <laughs> you can always PM me, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody about this. We have Abby Johnson's quotes. You know, she'll say things like, don't have a tizzy, all right? Like somebody will bring up um, rape. Well, what if the baby's raped? She'll be like, oh, don't have a tizzy about rape. You know, like, don't, the, the, that number is so small, right? Um, and just the way that she thinks is not Christian. All right. Do not expect a Christian response from her, by the way. So if you're an abolitionist, you think, you know, abortion should be illegal and you talk to Abby Johnson, watch her. Watch how she responds. She'll have you kicked out of the room. Right. Uh, she, she tries to ignore the whole abolition thing and she thinks making abortion illegal is wicked and wrong. So anyway, thank you. That's it.